about what's going on. JJ Kinahan joining us. He's CEO of IG North America. JJ, nice to see you. And uh, hey, John, how are you? Oh. Happy, uh, happy uh, leap year, I guess, as we get a, a little <laughs> leap day. Yeah, correct? exactly. Get a little extra February. But as I was mentioning, February and January are, are, are looking like positive months, and that's generally a positive sign for the year overall. How would you assess the mood of the markets right now? Well, you know, it's, uh, the mood of the markets has obviously been a really good one so far this year. It's hard to argue with success. You, you see what happened since October, and it's been steady buying. And what's really interesting to me, John, is it's kind of the rally that nobody truly loves. And what I mean by that is you've seen this rally in Bitcoin. Everybody's talking about Bitcoin, et cetera. And outside, perhaps, a stock like NVIDIA and maybe the Magnificent Seven in general, you really haven't heard as much talk about the market overall. You know, you and I have been doing this for a long time, and you think about all the times that people say the, the market's frothy. It's usually frothy when you go, you know, you go have a drink or you go to a cocktail party or for coffee, and everyone's talking about the markets. I don't get that sense that that's what's happening right now. In fact, it's still amazing to me how much nervousness there is around a market that just continues to climb and climb slowly but surely, making its way higher week after week. So that's helpful context because these are the kinds of things we're talking to strategists about when it comes to which parts of the market people might be gravitating towards. And I just highlighted we have more bank earnings in Canada today. But, you know, financials, this is one of these areas as, a, as an investable area, particularly in the U.S., that a lot of top strategists keep talking about, looking at the, you know, value within that sector versus, let's say, big tech. Now, you've been watching a few trends with one of the bigger banks uh, on Wall Street, yeah. and that is Citigroup. What'd you come away with? Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I look at our client data through our brokerage side at Tasty Trade. And one of the things that, you know, uh, people need to understand about retail, retail does tend to be a bit on the long side. People buy for the retirement accounts and hold, et cetera. It's usually about 52% of the activity is bullish, 48% of the activity is bearish, people closing positions, whatever it may be. I look at a stock like Citigroup, and as you know, and you've reported on in the past, they've, they're going through this tremendous restructuring at the moment, really streamlining their business. Businesses. What we've seen in our client base over the last two weeks, John, 82% of the activity has been bullish. That's absolutely phenomenal at the highest end of the scale you'll see. People are believing the story, believing that long term, this is going to work out well for City. And again, if you look at them versus the other major competitors, they have trailed those competitors. And I think the story is going to be that people believe that City is going to be able to catch them in every major way because of the way they're realigning the company. You know, it's also interesting. Uh, we, we have this constant dialogue. You, you kind of referenced it on Main Street People feel a bit meh right now. And I think everybody's mm -hmm. trying to assess the consumer's sentiment as we roll through the rest of the year. Um, there's been a, a dialogue around Walmart. You know, uh, it, you know, some people look at Walmart as a hedge against sort of a, a, a economic malaise ahead. Uh, but you're watching Costco, which, you know, as much attention as the tech stocks get, this stock has been an all-star performer over the last decade. When you look at sentiment right now, what are you seeing? Well, you know, again, like Citigroup, incredible bullish activity. And, you know, you bring up this chart and you're just like, wow. Talk about, if you were writing a textbook on how you'd like to invest longer term in a stock and see it perform, I think that you would just show the Costco stock over the last couple of years because it's just up to the right, very slow but sure, every single day it seems. And, uh, you know, a, a stock that just continues to perform at, you know, 52 week highs, yet still manages to find a way to go higher. Uh, our client activity there, again, 80% bullish. So these are numbers, John, when you get above 75, 77, it is people who truly believe who really want to own the stock and own it now in a very aggressive manner. And it's just not stock activity. It may be buying calls, whatever it is. So again, these are two stocks that people have really come out over the last couple of weeks, really aggressive uh, in, in getting along those. So 
great stories to watch for your viewers over the next couple of weeks. I can't let you go, though, without talking about at least one tech name. It was interesting. We were talking earlier in the program about Salesforce. They reported their quarterly results. Everyone's sort of looking at the AI strategy and, and trying to sort of assess that versus what's happened with the stock. It's had a big run over the last year. Um, Oracle's an example of a company that is also betting on you know, uh, uh, an AI lift. Investors had certainly been betting on that too. But what are the charts telling you about the Oracle story? Yeah, so again, if I reference our customers' activity here, so, uh, you know, I gave you what the ratios usually are, and now you're seeing a stock like Oracle, which their bearish or neutral activity is near 70%. And you saw a stock that just this month has had, you know, we've talked about the lack of volatility in the market, but this stock, if you look at the chart, has had some decent, uh, you know, volatility. And so up near 116, falls pretty quickly to about 108. Last week or so, it's been hanging out about 112. And what we've seen is it got back up here, sellers just coming in from the retail side. So I think with Oracle, the true uh, information that our clients are looking at is, okay, here's a stock that's trying to compete in the chip space also has talked about doing AI chips. You know, uh, are they gonna be able to be fast enough and efficient enough to compete with those that already have a really big head start here. So again, Oracle is a company, you know, that I've followed for a long time, and it's one that does find a way to get things done over time. But in the near term, they have some challenges, and I think our client base has picked up on that. Is this challenge in the short term more than perhaps Oracle can overcome? So again, We'll see if they're right even for a few points if we head back down and test this low on the you know 108 side that we just saw recently.